Hello and welcome to a multiplayer update for Legacy of the Void. In this video, we will be discussing additions and changes coming to the Protoss race in the thrilling conclusion to the StarCraft II trilogy. Let's get to it. New to the Protoss arsenal is the Disruptor, a micro-intensive splash damage option that can warp in at the robotics facility. This unit can go into an invulnerable energy form and after a short duration, deal burst damage to all units around it. Micro is key to defense against the Disruptor, otherwise you will take massive damage. Then again, some units just deal with it. But if you can effectively micro your units to counter, you'll be able to take the Disruptor out. Now to the big guns, the Immortal. We're removing the Hardened Shield passive and adding an active ability that absorbs damage for a short duration. Changing up the Immortal's defense in this manner will open up new options for Micro on both sides of play. In a perfect engagement, Immortals now have the potential to stand against units that typically deal well with them. With these changes, Immortals will still be effective against units like the Siege Tank without being such a hard counter. Previously, in an engagement like this one, no Immortals would have been lost. The Warp Prism. This unit is getting some love with the ability to pick up other units from a distance. This change will also allow the Warp Prism to rescue critical units during engagements. We expect that with this change, we will see Drop Micro become a more core part of Protoss harassment. There are a few changes on the table for the Oracle. First, we are combining Revelation with Envision. Now, cloaked units hit by Revelation are also revealed. This change combines the two similar abilities while opening up a new method of detection in situations where observers aren't the best option. We have also added a new ability to the Oracle called Stasis Ward. This is a trap set by an Oracle that is triggered when enemy units walk nearby, causing them to enter a stasis state where they can no longer attack, move, use abilities, or take damage. Undetected stasis wards at key locations have the potential to keep an enemy army at bay for significant periods of time. The Tempest has now been redesigned to only attack ground units, while also getting a significant buff to its movement speed. Alongside this, we have added a new ability to the Tempest called Disintegration that allows it to deal high, single-target damage over a long period of time. As you can see in this example, units tagged with Disintegration can either sit passively and die, or move out to do whatever damage they can before expiring. Lastly, changes have arrived to the Carrier. Interceptors can now be deployed to fight at a specific target area, allowing the opportunity to deal damage with a unit in multiple locations. You can now strategize ways to get maximum damage out of the unit at any moment. That concludes all the changes on the table for the Venerable Protoss race. Keep in mind that everything is subject to change as we move into public testing. That being said, we are pumped for the new options open to Protoss players in Legacy of the Void. And of course, look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback as well. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out the changes coming to both Zerg and Terran armies. I'm Cloakin with Blizzard Entertainment, and we'll talk to you soon.